When it comes to fishing, it's uh, you have to work on your nets. So each fisherman is different, and each fish is different. You have to maintain your equipment and your gear, and my uncle he would uh, get me out there and show me how to mend nets and hang nets and do it for myself so I wouldn't have to have other people uh, do it for me. Just a net needle and a little bit of common sense. Uh, you've got a pattern of how the net is, is supposed to be set and you, once you just get started, it's repetition over and over and over and you just get faster the more you do. I learned fishing from the whole Craddock side, you know, my family's been doing that, but I, I grew up with, with my grandfather and, and great uncles and, and my uncle and father teaching me to sew net and fish. When my ancestors would go pound netting, like if they were summer fishing, they had camps all down in the Pamlico Sound, and, they, and they'd pack up and leave for a month. Just go down there, and, that, and that's where they stayed. And uh, up in my shoes, when they go do the fall fishing, there was camps all up and down them ditches up there. And that's, that's where a fish camp come from. I mean, you just couldn't, you went up there and you worked all day long and you just didn't get a chance to get home. You just went up there and stayed in the camp. When these pow nets is, uh, and what I'm working on here now is the crib, it sets out off the end of a long lead. You got a lead that'll come, come from the shore out. And it's kind of like a highway that turns him and, and runs out towards this crib or the pound or the head. There's several different names for it. But, uh, and then he, as he gets up there, there's a set of hearts that go off at an angle back towards the shore. And then it goes to the tunnel, which drops him into this pound, which is a bottom and four walls. And we'll pull the boat inside and we'll web up from, from the tunnel side and push the fish to the back wall and bunt them down. And it's one of the most humane ways, I guess you should say, of catching a fish. He's, he's completely alive. Uh, if there is some that need to be thrown back, they're thrown back unharmed whatsoever. The nets I typically uh, make right around here will be drop netters, croaker nets, a uh, few trout nets, flounder nets. I like a good quality net that catches good quality fish. It's just it's just hard to beat a North Carolina flounder. That's all they are to it. You just can't beat him, that's all. I mean, he's just, he, to me, he's first class fish to eat this Albemarle Sound fish. Yes. We tend to get a little more money for our pound net fish because of the quality. They're not, uh, they're not, they're not scarred up or marked up and they, they look really good on a, uh, on a market. I could go on for, four hours about fishing just just for the passion that I have for it and, and I'd, I'd love to see it continue on for my boys. I would uh, definitely like to see the future generation involved more in the commercial fishing and because this is like a lost art uh, hardly anybody ever does it anymore. I'm sure we're going to see less and less fishermen uh, but I'm hoping that they're just going to be the one or two that are stubborn enough to stick it out. There's nothing promised to you out there in the real world. When it comes to fishing, you can always take a net, hop in your boat, and if you got the oar out there, you know there's fish out there, so you're gonna make something.